You're now watching Lena Blue TV. Hey, fresh out the press, I know you heard about me. I'm the neighborhood Debo, ain't no way around me. Know some junkies for a fix, they'll catch a body. So we got double A in the building. What's going on? What's going on? How you doing? Can't complain. Blessed and highly favored. How you doing? Pretty good. Thank you. So um, you have a few titles. Okay. You're a producer. You are a writer. You're also an artist. What would you rather be known as? A musician. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm all of those things uh, all wrapped up into one, but I'm more so just a musician, somebody who loves music, and I can do every facet of music. Yes. Let's start from the beginning of your career. Okay. Pangea Kids. Pangea Kids. Shout out to them boys, man. Yes. Life is a gamble, so you better choose the right fate. Careful where you stand, so you better choose the right place. Yeah. Jungle chain, what it look like straight from the motherland. Get it for the right price because this is radio change. So put your lighters up and let the beat play. Jungle on my neck, please. Jungle on my neck. Jungle on my neck, please. Jungle on my neck. Man, I remember in high school, that's all the students talked about. Okay. It's Pangea kids. People would have the um, the jungle on their necks. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. They would yeah. talk about thrift stores and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, how did you guys begin that wave successfully? Uh, well, uh, it was easy for us to even start the group because we're all family, you know what I'm saying, like blood-related family. Um, but the music was always a part of us, you get what I'm saying? But one day I was working, um, and it was a piano, and I was just playing with some melodies. I really don't know how to play the piano, but I was just, you know, playing around, and I, I heard something that caught my attention. So I went home, and uh, at the time, Chris the Great had the Rolling Phantom. And um, I made that? a keyboard, mm -hmm. keyboard. And um, I was making the beat and then he was like, bro, look what I just found from the thrift store. Like, mm -hmm. it's dope, it's different. It ain't diamonds, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's very uh, innovative that, you know, I feel like in the rap game, people don't have. So one thing led to another and he was like, hey, I wrote this song just to let y'all know. And then, you know what I'm saying? That right there turned into uh, it being what it was for the city. You know what I'm saying? It was a good look, for sure. Wow. Wow. So how do you how do you think that you guys became very successful? Is it is it the shows that you guys did? So or? what what happened was Chris uh, at the time he was a substitute teacher. Mm -hmm. So what he would do was he would take the music as he was subbing. He would go in and um, uh, he would take the the music and play it for the students. You know, when you're a sub, you ain't really not too much of nothing y'all can do. So he'd be like, hey, y'all, go on y'all phones on YouTube and check this out. Or go on MySpace. That's what it was. It was MySpace, dog. It was crazy. But he was like, go here and check us out and take pics and all of that. So after a while, that kind of just grew to what it is. Wow. So you started as an artist. Yep. And then you ended up producing. Correct. When you got to college. Yes. Well, I, just a little bit before, it was a group in my city by the name of uh, PCC. Mm -hmm. um, they heard what we did as Pangea Kids, and it was like, bro, we want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So y'all got more music, y'all got beats. So that's what happened. We were making beats for those boys, and from there, it kind of grew into a little love for it. So once I went off to college, that's when um, Pangea kind of slowed down. And you know, when you're making beats, you don't need to perform. Only thing you're doing is just making beats. So that's what came from it. So did um, per percussion or playing drums help with that? Oh, most definitely. Growing up in the church, that's what really helped out everything. I grew up in the church playing the drums at the age of two. Um, that grew into me loving the marching band. From the marching band, that had me understand how certain sounds are put together. You know, you got uh, the band director, and he, he arranges music. And when you're in practice, you see how all the instruments break down. So I just translated that to making beats, and that's how it happened. Help me understand the difference between a producer 
and a beat maker. So a beat maker is somebody who just makes beats and that's it. You know what I'm saying? That's that's really it. That's your end all be all. With a producer, you may not even necessarily even make beats. DJ Khaled is a producer. He doesn't make beats. Um, uh, Diddy is a producer. He doesn't make beats. Um, you even got people like Dr. Dre and uh, DJ Mustard who are great at what they do, but they have people up under them now. You know what I'm saying? They're so busy to the point where they make beats, you know what I'm saying? But they are more of the visionary to say, look, put this here, put this here. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to put you up under me because people like that, they want to see other people win. You know what I'm saying? Like myself, I want to see people win. So you got people on my team who, you know, would do more of the lead work. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm so busy being an artist and doing other things. I listen to a record and I'll be like, cool, I'm, let me touch that. You know what I'm saying? And I know exactly what an artist may be looking for. So it may be something missing and I'll just put the finishing touches on it. Or I will just wake up and have a spurt and say, you know what? Let me just make beats all day today. You know what I'm saying? Like the other day, I made 40 beats straight in one day. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I haven't done that in so long, but I had the, um, the will to do that. But to go back to your question, a producer is somebody who really knows how to put the play together. You know what I'm saying? They will stay there hand and foot and they will complete the song. You know what I'm saying? A producer, they somebody, they get the beat and they just wait for the finishing product. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A producer really molds the record. He makes the record what it is. Mm -hmm. So with that, what's the difference between a producer and an A&R? Um, and <laughs> I was talking to, so a and is what they do is they kind of just make sure that they don't do any of the creation of the song at all. They can put people in position to say, look, well, I got this producer, right? And I feel like he'll be good for you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So they kind of just set up certain situations mm -hmm. to make a play happen. Mm -hmm. But they don't necessarily do anything to make a play. Like you got certain a and they be like, send me a pack. And they'll cipher through the beats on what they think is good for the artist. Okay. And from there, you know, you'll maybe get a hit. But a lot of times, a and R's don't really know what's best because they don't, they're not creatives. You know what I'm saying? They're just going off of what they think. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And one more, executive producer. Executive producer really does a whole project. You know what I'm saying? They oversee the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? And... That's where, you know, you got the ditties that come in, mm -hmm. play. Uh, DJ Khaled is also known as an artist, right? But he is hand and foot on all of his projects. Mm -hmm. If a snare drum sounds off, he gonna be like, nah, it don't make me feel. I have to feel a certain type of way. So change it until I feel a certain type of way. Mm -hmm. And that's what executively producing is because I like it to sound this way. Yes. I want it to be this way. I need it to be this way. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Your very first hit that you produced, what track was that? The first hit? Hungry by Kodak Black. Hello baby, what you looking at? She say hold up, ain't you Kodak Black? Hungry. Yeah, Hungry by Kodak Black. Um, my little brother, J-Law, he had brain surgery. And um, he was just like, look, bro, you know what I'm saying? It's this record that you need to go ahead, and, this guy you need to go ahead and do. So I looked at him and I was like, I, don't, I ain't never really hear of him. But um, one thing led to another, and he, um, I sent him some beats, and two, three days later, I go back to college. I get a phone call from my brother, like, bruh, Kodak Black hopped on one of your beats. So I go on YouTube, I see the video, and it's going viral. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happened. How did you feel, like, when you first learned that this project was huge? What was that feeling like? I felt like I wanted more because I didn't understand it at that time, you know what I'm saying? Wasn't no money coming in. So I said, look, if I got one, I can get another one. If I got another one, I can get another one. And here we are, 50 something plaques later, you know what I'm saying? Never be content, I'm never content. You know what I'm saying? I, I could celebrate it all day, but I knew for a fact I needed more. I wanted more, you know what I'm saying? I was never satisfied. Does that urge of success ever end? Nah, so, I told myself I wanted four Grammys. I wanted my own plaque for myself as an artist. Um, and I wanted to go diamond on whatever project it was. And I said, I'll be satisfied, but 
Somebody told me, Dub, the person you are, you're never going to be satisfied. And that's a good thing because you never want to put a cap on yourself. You know what I'm saying? You put a cap on yourself and then, you know what I'm saying, you, your goals and all of that is kind of null and void. You know what I'm saying? So I always strive to be better. The, the, every day that God wakes you up, you should have more goals and dreams for yourself to put forth. You know what I'm saying? How important are baby steps? Oh, you got to take baby steps. A lot of people think that, you know what I'm saying, doing anything, whether it's sports, uh, schooling, uh, whether it's uh, music, they want to do it quick. I, I need it now, I need it now. But if you don't understand the baby steps, if you don't understand the things that got you to this point, how is it that you can um, enjoy it? You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to enjoy and understand what helped you get to where you got to. Because a lot of people, man, I tell you, man, a lot of people get into a situation and then they become an overnight success. But just as quick as that success came, it vanished away. So you got to hustle hard and make sure that, hey, take your time. Make sure that you understand that this is something that you really want. Because people are getting into the game and whatever they're doing, they'll lose it. You know what I'm saying? They'll, they'll fall by the wayside, and that's not a good thing. Sometimes I may get frustrated um, going through my career or just going through life, but not truly understanding that the journey is what matters. Facts. And um, I, I feel like life is the best teacher. Mm -hmm. Facts. And, you know, sometimes it seems that I forget that. Facts. But um, you've produced countless works for Lil Boosie, Lil mm -hmm. Uzi, uh, Lil Wayne, Gucci, uh, Jack Boy, the list goes on. But you are especially known for Kodak Black and NBA Young Boys songs or mm -hmm. music. Facts. How do you feel with just having 54, you said 54 plaques, right? Yeah, I got a lot. It's, uh, too many to count, honestly. Mm -hmm. I got so many. Mm -hmm. Most of them are from NBA Young Boy and Kodak. Kodak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel with 54 plaques? What is that feeling like? Um, honestly, every time I get one, um, it's like a new, it's like a, a new feeling that you that you never felt before. You know what I'm saying? Like I take it all with a grain of salt. A lot of people um, they lose sight of being thankful or the hard work that you put into it. So they kind of it kind of goes over their head, you know what I'm saying? But I, I, it's really motivation, you know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, if I help somebody get these plaques, I know for a fact I would want more plaques mm -hmm. on, of my own, you know what I'm saying? So it's really just motivation. To me, you're, you're sort of like a chameleon mm. in certain um, places. It seems that you can instantly read a room and then seem to complement or accommodate the emotion in the room, but also keep in your own mind. Facts. The question is, why is it important to pay attention to your surroundings? I made a post the other day and I said, Lord, protect me from my friends. I can take care of my enemies, right? So the thing is, what I, <laughs> by me saying that is, if you're not aware of your surroundings, you never know who may be a friend or a foe. You get what I'm saying? You, may, you have to know how to maneuver in any type of situation. You get what I'm saying? So you can go and live life gullible you can go and be someone who, um, how can I put it, uh, just live life carefree, but it's always, every time you go somewhere, it's always a reasoning behind it. Don't be naive and uh, unaware of why you're in a room or in a situation, because everything is a lesson. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's you going in for a meeting with an a &R and you may not, they may not be as interested, that's a lesson. You know what I'm saying? You go to church, don't go in there and go to sleep because it's a lesson. Don't go to school and fall asleep, why? Because it's a lesson. So always remember that. You always have to be able to be open-minded, be very alert, and be aware of what's going on around you because like you said, life is the best teacher, really. So just open up your eyes and ears and you'll see it's, it's something being taught out there. Lena Blue TV.